Proudly, we hail. City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station to bring you this story as proudly we hail the United States Air Force. years learning how to do a job in the Air Force, and that job becomes something more than just a task he performs during duty hours. In today's story, Winter Night, three sergeants discover how much they have to fall back on when the chips are down. Our first act curtain rises in just a moment. Are you a service veteran? Then listen carefully. This message is for you. You may be qualified to enlist in the United States Air Force in a grade that will surprise you. If you possess one of the critical skills needed to keep America's air defense strong, the Air Force offers you an opportunity to put your skill to work and at a higher grade and higher pay than you may realize. The Air Force needs experience and know-how gained in the armed forces. And now, thanks to the new Career Incentive Act, you can put your service gain skills to work to your best advantage by returning to the armed forces as a member of the Air Force team. Write or visit your Air Force recruiter for the special prior service man's folder. It's full of important details. You'll see why, today and tomorrow, you're better off in the United States Air Force. And now your Air Force presents the proudly we hail production, Winter Night. Late one February afternoon in 1956, a sudden snowstorm hit the northwestern section of the United States. It began with a little fall just before dawn, grew heavier all morning, and by late in the day had turned into a driving blizzard. An airliner that had taken off from Portland en route for Chicago and New York was one of the many commercial planes that had been ordered to the ground in the face of the storm. There were 40 passengers on the plane, three of whom were Air Force sergeants. The pilot of the plane took her down at an airport outside the town of Blanton, high in the Cascade Mountains. There, the passengers received the news. All flights were canceled indefinitely. The passengers milled about the small waiting room in the airport, uncertain of what to do next. Did you hear anything? No, just the announcement on the PA system. I was talking to that other sergeant, the one who was sitting in back of me, and he's gone up to the operations office. Maybe he can find out something. Would you know a thing like this would happen to me? Starting my furlough today. Oh. I figured on being in New York by tonight. Oh, where are you headed for, Sergeant? Uh, school. I'm taking a special course in occupational therapy. I'm due in at Gunner Air Base the day after tomorrow. This is a long way from Alabama. Are you in the medics? Yeah. My name's Lloyd Grace. Oh, I'm John Manders. Oh. I'm a chief mechanic at McCord Air Base. How are you? Oh, what are we going to do, John? This thing might last two or three days. You can't tell about these freak storms. This one came up out of nowhere. Hey, you guys want a lift? Well, oh, where to, Elmer? Well, into town to start off with. Uh, Elmer, this is John Manders. He's going on furlough. How oh, are you? hi. I'm just coming off. Look, I spoke to a guy in the control tower, and how do you like this? He's the brother of the navigator of my crew, and he says that this looks pretty much like a local storm. There's an airport about 70 miles from here in Blairsville, and they're still flying out of there. Yeah, but what kind of a flight can we get there? Well, we can get something to Denver, at least. Oh, it's on the way, anyhow. Sure. Yeah, but if that's 70 miles from here, how are we going to get through? We take a bus out of Blanton. It'll get there 10 o'clock, and there's a flight at midnight. Well, does this guy know for sure they're flying? So far, so good. But even if they're grounded by the time we get there, Blairsville's still on the main line of the railroad. Yeah. We'll get some kind of action. It could be a lot of traveling for nothing. Well, it beats hanging around here. Okay, <laughs> count me in. How can we get to the bus terminal? This guy comes off shift in 20 minutes. He's got his car outside. He said that he'll take us right into the depot. I'm going to come down. Hope this fellow's car can make it. Well, there's three of us. We can always uh, get out and push. <laughs> Due to the storm, 
storm or buses are running off schedule. The following trips are canceled. Number 7, number 12, and number 28B. Bus at gate 1 for Blairsville. Oh, brother, don't say that. Leaving canceled. in three minutes. Come on, let's get over there. Oh, yeah, let's go. Are you positive we can get through to Blairsville? Lady, I'm only positive I'm going to get behind the wheel and try. You'll never make it, madam. You'll never get across the mountains in this snow. Oh, dear. Is that so, driver? Come on, folks. On or off? Well, it's huh? very important for me to get to Blairsville tonight. Well, let's go, lady. Let's go. Oh, dear. It's such a desolate road in this storm. You listen to me, madam. That bus will never get through. Oh, what do you say, lady? Quit blocking the door, huh? It's a matter of life and death. I... I don't have any choice. You you will drive carefully, won't you? Please. Could I have your ticket, please? Well, ticket? Oh, for crying out loud, lady. You had all day to get... Uh, all right. All right. J just give me $2.19. Do you have change for $20? Who do you think I am? The Federal Reserve Bank? Oh, all right. All right. Hand, hand it over, lady. Suppose... Well, suppose we get stuck in the mountains in this blizzard. Now, that's a happy thought. You got any more cheerful ideas? If not, sit down someplace, ma'am. You're blocking the aisle. Okay, Jerry, I'm pulling out with 18 passengers. Hold it, Hank. We got three more. Well, well, look at this. Air Force sergeants. You fellas coming down to see how the other half travels? Uh, are you traveling, driver? Yeah, we hear the roads are getting clogged up. Is it still clear, driver? All I know is my dispatcher says take off. Good enough? Good enough. Come on, let's get on, fellas. Bus number 45 for Kensington, Dorrance Falls, Triple Fork, Center Valley, and Blasville now leaving from gate number one. All aboard. Well, Blasville, here we come. I hope. Hey, shut that window. I uh, I just wanted to see what was doing outside. Uh, well, madam, now you know. Yes, now I know. Hey, Elmer, look. Wipe off your window. Those cars are stalled along the side of the road. Yeah. Yeah, but this is a big baby. Plenty of traction. Hey, hey what time is it, John? Um, I got five minutes to nine. One thing's for sure. We won't make Blairsville in time to get a plane. If there is a plane. No, this doesn't look like a local blizzard to me. He hasn't been able to average better than six or seven miles an hour since we started. No, it's coming down heavier and it's getting colder. What do you think, Elmer? Uh, maybe it wasn't such a hot idea. Excuse me, hmm? Sergeant. Do you, do you think something's wrong? What? Oh, no, lady, no. Everything's okay. I must get to Blairsville. I must get there in time. In time for what, lady? But can you imagine? Just this morning she sent me a telegram. My little sister Janet. She's just a baby. Here's what it says. See, Walter and I getting married tomorrow. Well, if she's just a baby, how can she get married? Of course she's a baby. She's only 37. And who's Walter? I never met him. She must be making a dreadful mistake. I let her out of my sight just a week and... Hey, hey, what's up? It's okay, folks. I just skidded. We're all right now. Well, that was close, you know. And look, fellas, the rest of them seem to be getting kind of nervous, and it's not doing any good. So I think the three of us ought to create the idea that everything's on the beam. Yeah, yeah you're right. Hey, hey, driver, slow down, will you? You want to get picked up for speeding? <laughs> hey, look out there. Hey, well, where are we, driver? Well, this, believe it or not, is the thriving metropolis of Dorrance Falls. Population 207, one gas station, three stores, and what they claim is a hotel. The only reason I bring it up is because it's 26 miles and nothing between here and Triple Forks. All of it's through the mountains. Anybody want out here to put up for the night? Say so, I'll make a stop. Now, what do you say? Well, I got nothing to say. Dispatcher said, take her through to Blairsville. Well, are you going? All I can tell you, Sarge, is that I'm moving. As long as I'm moving, I'm going. Well, if you're going, we're going. Well, that doesn't look too bad around here. They got the snow plows, huh? Does anybody want to get off? Okay, we keep rolling. <laughs> idea the dispatcher will hold me up at Triple Forks. Any idea when we'll be able to get out of there? Well, no more than a day or two, I hope. Depends on how long this stuff keeps falling. Yeah, we're no worse off in Triple Forks than we would have been in Blanton. You fellas in a hurry to get someplace? 
The tall one is on his furlough. His wife is expecting a baby in New York. The red-headed guy is due to report at Gunter in Alabama. He's taking a course with the medics. Medic, huh? Mm-hmm. Sure hope we don't need him before this is over. Where are you bound for, Sarge? I'm coming off furlough. I'm heading east to join my crew. I'm a tail gunner on a B-52. I guess uh, maybe we got a wrong steer back there in Blanton. The guy said it was just a <laughs> local storm. Well, it was. We get them in these mountains. Only this time, I guess it just spread. How are they doing back there? Okay, I guess. How much further to Triple Forks? About 16 miles. Anything between here and there? Well, there's a gas station about four miles ahead. You know something? What? I'm afraid we're going to have to settle for that. Okay. But, uh, don't say nothing to anybody, huh? You can let your buddies know, but nobody else. Right. They might get a little panicked. Driver, why must we crawl along like this? At this rate, we'll never reach Flansville. Lady, why don't you get out and push? Well, look, why don't we all uh, just relax, huh? We ought to be in Triple Fork soon, and we'll all get some hot coffee, and everyone will feel better. Hey, hey everybody hey, grab on to something. <laughs> Lloyd, uh, you guys okay? Yeah, 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 I'm all right. What happened? Oh. Anybody hurt back there? We're, We're off the road. Yeah. Yeah, well, is everybody okay? Anybody hurt back hey, there? Hey, Lloyd, Lloyd, the driver. My arm. Oh. His forehead's bleeding. Oh, that's not too bad. It's cut by the broken glass, but his arm, arm is bleeding bad. Let me get over there, Tom. Listen, uh, have you got a first aid kit? Yeah, I got, got a little one. It's under the seat. Yeah. Anybody got a pocket knife? Yeah. yeah. Here. Go got to cut away to sleep. Ow. My arm. Yeah. I'm afraid it's broken. Open up the first aid kit and oh. see what we got. Somebody do something. My finger is cut. The aid station's right here, lady. Line forms on the left. Oh, here you go. See, we got some bandages and some violence and aspirin. This stuff will have to do. I'll try to stop the bleeding. I have to splint the arm. Uh, Elmer, uh, hmm? take a look around. Everybody else seem to be okay? Yeah, I think most of them got a little shook up. A couple of cuts from the glass, but nobody seems to be in trouble. Good. Check it out later. Right now, this guy really needs help. Uh, John, hold this dressing in place a second, will you? Sure. No. Uh, what do we use for a splint? Um, uh, there's a slat about a foot and a half long. I got jarred out of place from one of the seats. I can twist it off. Uh, hand me a jacket. I want to pad it up. There. I need a couple of belts. Do, lady, uh, will you lend me the shoulder strap from your pocketbook? But it Thank is... you. And uh, I need some overcoats to cover him up with, too. He's in shock. I have to keep him warm. Right here, here. Take mine. You need yeah. it? Need? Could use some intravenous and some stimulants, some sterile dressing, some penicillin. Just have to go with what we got. Man, it's getting cold in here, too. I got three or four busted windows. Listen, everybody. Look, let's cover up these openings and keep the wind out. Use magazines, newspapers, coats, anything you can Yeah, find. this guy needs it warm in here. Hey, hey, how about the heater? Let me try to start the motor. Yeah, and turn on the lights, will you? I can hardly see what I'm doing. Now, what's the matter with it, John? Nothing happened. She's dead. I'd better go out in the back and look at the motor. Anybody got a flashlight? Yeah, right here, Sergeant. Oh. I hope it's something I can fix. I'll open the door. I'll come out with you. Yeah. yeah. Whoa. Looks like we skidded off the road. Must come down the side of the hill about oh, 50 feet, I guess. It's a good thing we landed in this ravine. There's a stiff drop right in back of us. That had been curtains. Let me open up this panel and look at the engine. Yeah, hold the flashlight, will you? Yeah. Hope you can get us started. Not that there's any chance of our being able to drive her out of here. But we need the heater. Well, even if I could find what's wrong, I don't see how I can fix it without tools. Well, let's hope we're lucky. Huh? Oh, man, my hands are freezing. Here, here, take my gloves. No, no, I can't work with gloves. Look, you go back inside. No sense both of us freezing out here. Yeah, yeah, but maybe I can give you a hand. Well, you can be more used to Lloyd inside. That driver's hurt bad. There's 15 people getting panicky. Uh, maybe you're right. You know, Lloyd's a medic and you're a mechanic. Both of you guys are busy. I, I just wish there was something I could do. How is he? Well, he stopped the bleeding. Splinted the arm. I'm just trying to keep him warm. Anybody else hurt? Oh, some cuts and bruises. 
One guy's got a dislocated shoulder, but nothing serious. Can we get some heat? Well, I think we're in luck. The engine looks all right, except a couple of wires were pulled loose. Oh. I connected them up as well as I could. If that's all that was the matter, we should be able to start her. Here, let me try it. There. Hey. hey! Hey, the motor's working. Can we get out of here? Hold it. We couldn't fudge her out of here tonight. She has to be towed out. But at least we'll be able to have heat. Yeah, and as long as we keep it warm in here, we're okay. I figure by some time tomorrow, they ought to come looking for us. Yeah. Man, I'm hungry. Yeah, we might as well all go on a diet. It doesn't look like anybody thought to bring <laughs> chow along. Well, I got a chocolate bar. Oh, thanks. We'll just have to split it up about 20 ways. Uh, what time you got, Lloyd? Uh, near 11. Well, that means we can figure on staying here quite a while. Now I'm scared. What's the matter? Just having a look at the gas gauge. She's over on empty. That means maybe two gallons left. Hey, how long will that last? I don't know how much she consumes while she idles, but I can tell it won't last us too long. Well, look, these buses don't run out of gas. They know how much they need for the trips, and we aren't even halfway to Blairsville. No, no, we should have plenty of gas. You forget this engine's been laboring for hours in low gear. She's been fighting for every foot of ground we covered. That's what eats up your gas. I average it out, we probably burned up maybe a, a gallon or so to the mile. That kind of driving empties your tank. Oh. We run out of gas and lose that heater. I don't know. We won't run out of gas. Don't worry. The driver was telling me there's a filling station three or four miles up the road. Yeah, yeah. And what good does that do us here? I'll bring some back. What are you, crazy? Uh, You'll never get there. We need the gas, don't we? And we also need help. Somebody should know where we are. Well, you were outside with me before. You know what's going on. It's worth taking a chance. But you can't go alone. Lloyd, let's be realistic. You're a medic, you got a job to do here. John's a mechanic, and he's also got his job here. I'm a gunner, and there's no call for my specialty, so I'm going to be the one to go for gas. It's, it's that simple. No, Sergeant, you can't go out on this Now, car. look, everybody we take it easy. Out. If it looks like I can't make it, I'll turn back. Okay, fellas, I, I, I'd better get with it. Uh, wait a minute, Sergeant. See if my galoshes fit you. They're dry. Thank you. Here, better put the sweater on under your coat. It, take my scarf. <laughs> okay, okay, all contributions gratefully received. Now, you know the way? Yeah, it looks like a climb of about 50, 75 feet to the road, and then I turn left and just keep going. Sergeant, hmm? when you get to that gas station, will you telephone my sister? She's Miss Janet Kramer at 11 Watkins Drive. You got that? Now, tell her not to do anything rash. She's to wait till I get there, remember now? Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay. Well, I'll see all you people. Oh, Elmer, uh, good luck. Take it easy, boy. Don't worry, fellas. I'll make it. Yeah, yeah, this fellow's pretty bad off, Elmer. You just got him. You are listening to the proudly we hail production, Winter Night. Our second act in a moment. First, here's something we want every veteran to know about. The United States Air Force needs men who are skilled in so-called critical jobs. Jobs that keep America's air defense strong. And for that reason, new opportunities, new benefits are now available to veterans who re-enlist in the Air Force. So if you're a veteran of any service, contact your nearest Air Force recruiter right away. Remember, today and tomorrow, you're better off in the United States Air Force. And now for the second act of the proudly we hail production, Winter Night. What do you mean you don't have any gas? That's right, son. I don't. Look, I I'm in no mood for jokes. The driver said there was a gas station here, and this is a gas station. I saw the pumps outside, so you... Now, take it easy, take it easy, and, and drink your coffee. Yeah, we're a gas station, but I don't carry gas in the winter. I shut down. Oh, no. You don't hardly get five cars a week along this road in the winter. I ain't got hardly a drop in the pump. So where am I going to get some gasoline? Where's your phone? I better telephone the state police. I gotta do something. Now, look here, son. You did what you could. The phone's out. All the wires are down in the storm. They got some gas over at the Haley farm, and, and Freddie Haley's a ham radio operator. Hey, hey, that's right. The Haley farm. Now, why didn't I think of that? 
Where is this place? Uh, about a mile and a half back. You passed it on the way, but you can't see it from the road. I'm on my way. Me you ain't in no condition to travel There's again. There's no help for it, Pop. Well, I'll go with you. Oh, wait a minute, Pop. Oh, you're... yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're thinking. I'm an old man. Well, I can keep up with plenty of them half my age. I'd better go, too. Now, Jimmy, I, I'd like to take you, but you stay here and watch over things. Uh, Sergeant, mm -hmm. tell me, you know how to operate that ham radio stuff? Yeah, yeah, I, I think I can figure it out. Why? Well, I just happen to think the Haley's ain't home. They all went to Blairsville. You've been the oldest son, Walter, he's getting married tomorrow. <laughs> uh, we all figured old Walt would end up a bachelor, but last week he ran into some gal from Blanton, and <laughs> there's the wedding bell. Oh. Uh, what are you smiling at, Sergeant? That's all. I don't know Walter, but I, I think I know his future sister-in-law. And all I can say is, uh, in a way, it's lucky that bus got stuck. Look, can we get into the place? Uh, they left me the key. I'm supposed to feed the stock tomorrow. Okay, then what are we waiting for? Well, we sure ain't waiting for me. And a man with his hands do it. So much a difference. Here goes. Now, this is... What's this guy's call that is I hear the idea. This is 2K32Y calling for help. 2ZH7 answering 2K32Y. Come in, 2K32Y. Listen, 2ZH7. The Blairsville bus has gone off the road in a ravine along... along State Highway 98, three miles southwest of the Haley Farm. Have you got that 2ZH7? Notify authorities. We need help at once. One man is badly injured. You know what to do, 2ZH7. I got you, 2K32Y. We'll contact the state police immediately. Anything further? No, nothing. Signing off. Oh, no, no, wait, wait a minute. Look, contact uh, Miss Janet Kramer in Blairsville. Where's that address? Yeah, I have it here. Look, the address is 11 Watkins Drive. It's it's a message from her sister. It says, follow. So happy for you, dear. Do not delay wedding on my account. All my love and good luck. Yeah. You got it? You got it. Well, now my idea. Signing off. I want to blow her. Well, Pop, how do we stand? Well, I've been busy, son. We ought to get through on the After track. they blew them, hey. well, they came right at us. Hey, son. What's the matter? Well, it's one of them, sure. Pop, I... And I noticed okay. that they came from Oh, here no, you ain't. Son, you're worn out. You're dead on your feet. I don't think you can make it back. Uh, you just crawl into bed right here and get under some covers. I'll take the stuff back to the bus. No, no, you could never make it alone, Pop. Don't you worry about me. You wouldn't know where to find him, no. I've got to go with you. How are you doing, son? I keep falling asleep, Pop. Just keep falling asleep. Well, don't, boy. You fall asleep now and you'll never wake up. If I can close my eyes and down on the one side and we're on the other, we can we'll wipe them out. That's what I'm so good. You know you might not come, come back. Come on, come on, come on, boy. Wake up, wake up. Now, where'd the bus get off the road? Well, come on, tell me. Well, I don't remember. What? I'll go back to the Well, I, I think we knocked the branches off a pine tree. Yeah, I, I remember. Let's see where I'm. Yeah, yeah, we... Hey, Pop! Huh? Pop, look, look, it's here. Yes, uh, I remember now. We went right through these trees, Pop, right through them. They're the only trees in sight. It must be down this way, Pop. Okay, we'll head down. I don't see a thing. You sure this is the place? Look. Hey. Hey, that's it. Yeah. The lights are out. It's awfully quiet. Must have run out of gas long ago. Oh, they must be freezing in there. John. Lloyd. Hey, you guys, I'm back. I made it. Elmer. Elmer. Lloyd. Come on, come on. Give us a hand. I got gas, coffee, chow, blankets. Boys, we're in business. <laughs> Let me pour you some more coffee, Sergeant, huh? Yeah, yeah, thank you. Anyone care for another sandwich? 
How's the driving light? Oh, he's sleeping quietly now. Well, you don't know how cold it got in here with that heater off before. That gasoline you brought back sure saved his life. <laughs> Look at him. Hey, hey, fella. Hmm? You back to sleep now? How do you feel? Oh, I'll, I'll be okay. You did a great job. I was lucky. I took more than luck on your part. Guess I'm the guy that's lucky. This was my regular bus. That gas wouldn't have helped a bit. What do you mean? Shows you. When I come in for work this afternoon, they gave me this one. My regular job is in the repair shop. My regular bus is a diesel. This is one of the last buses on the line that still burns gasoline. Yeah, I guess I am lucky. Well, okay, okay. You just get some rest now. I guess you're all lucky. I think the snow is slacking off. The highway patrol knows where you are, and as soon as it gets light, there ought to be some help out here. Sergeant, I... Huh? I, I mean, Sergeant. Yes, ma'am? The passengers have asked me to... Well, they think because I'm a school teacher, I would know how to say it better, but... Well, they... Well, we all want to say it better, but... Well, we all want to thank you. The three of you. You each did a job for us, and... We think you're a credit to our Air Force. Uh, thanks. Uh, uh, Sergeant, I... Sergeant, I've had a chance to do a, well, a, a lot of thinking these past couple of hours, and, well, I, I hope you didn't take me seriously and telephone my sister in Blairsville. Th there's really no reason why she shouldn't get married. Well, uh, I uh, did send her a message, uh, but don't worry about it. The next time you see her, she'll be... She'll be married to the guy whose coffee you happen to be drinking right now. Oh, oh that's wonderful. Well, really, that's wonderful. Well, I suppose the Air Force thinks of everything. Well, ma'am, the, the Air Force sure tries to. Announcing new opportunities for former servicemen in the Air Force. If you're a veteran of any service and are seriously interested in a brighter future, you should take a close look at the Air Force Prior Service Program. You'll find that your skills and experience acquired in the Armed Forces can bring immediate rewards in the Air Force. If you qualify in one of many needed categories, you can enlist in an appropriate grade immediately and enjoy a 30-day paid delay in reporting if requested. And if you don't have a currently usable skill, you can take an aptitude test before enlisting, which, if you qualify, will guarantee the finest technical training. Today's airmen receive generous pay raises, increased bonuses and allowances, and extended retirement benefits. This is just part of the picture. See your local Air Force recruiter for all the facts, and there's no obligation. Find out why, today and tomorrow, you're better off in the United States Air Force. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center in New York for the United States Air Force. This is Ralph Rowland inviting you to tune in the same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>